Hello everyone, it's Vonic Zombie. Welcome back to Criminal Minds. So, um, it's been a while since I've played. Uh, might not seem like to you guys, um, since these episodes run in a row on YouTube, but it's been a while for me. <laughs> um, so we are currently in the administrative building, I believe it is, and we have the third task of giving Garcia a link between classes, finding a copy of community school roster piece, and analyzing the painting. So, where do we need to go next? Okay, we've already been in here, looking at stuff. We have a locker key. Like I said, it's been a while since I've played, so need to familiarize myself once again with what's going on. No, that's community center. Okay. Where's JJ with that car to the police station? We'll keep working here until she comes back. Okay, there's the body. Oh, there's a hidden object thing there. Okay. I was searching the map for a while. I'm just kind of like, uh, kind of lost. Let me just look around and like, see if something new pops up. And yeah, we found a hidden object scene. Okay. Well, there's the roster we're looking for. This is a class roster for the art school. Okay, we need to make a copy of that. There it is. Okay. We found the art school roster. We need to make a copy of it. Correct. Yeah, find and copy. Community school roster piece. Okay. There's a copy machine. We should examine this painting before we leave. It could be it could be of the second victim. Okay. Let's do that. Now we can get a good look at the painting. Ooh, find all the hearts. There's a giant eye there. Last time we had to look at a painting, we had to find all the eyes. But we're looking at hearts. That one's a broken heart. Let's see. Hearts, all the hearts. Still eyes. Why so many hearts? What is the unsub saying? And that one. Okay. Ah, more info to develop the profile. Okay, let's see. Now, this, these are starting to get tricky. This painting follows all the same psychological patterns as the last one. Inferiority complex, possible rejection, obsessive attention to the victim's personality. Except this one is success base. The unsub removed a trophy, diploma, and graduation photo from the victim's home. So I would suspect that unsub had or is having trouble in school and is unable to focus on long-term goals. Where do the hearts come in? Was the unsub in love with the victim? Or jealous of the victim being loved? All of these clues speak more to envy than lust.
There we go! Envy or lust, either way it's a deadly sin. Chances are high this ends up will strike again and the clock is ticking. Okay. Summary, the painting shows inferiority, rejection, and obsession with the victim's personality, just like the eyes painting. Except this one is success-based. The unsub had or is having trouble in school. Hearts, the unsub seems more jealous of the victim for being loved, not in love with the victim. Okay. The unsub was clearly jealous of Claire. First of her success, now of her love. Okay, we're going to the locker. Yes, it's locked, but we do have a key. Oh. Are these the clips of hair the Unsub took from Kate and Claire? The Unsub had access to these lockers. That's pretty disturbing. Okay, we have hair. And half of the missing roster. Okay. Back to the community center! Willing to bet it's that creepy dude in the park. I forgot his name. But you guys know the guy that was painting in the park? And he said like the women in the park were prime real estate? That's just my guess. Could just be a regular creepy dude. Okay. Half. Make a copy. We need some clean paper to make a copy. We have paper! Okay. Beauty Center roster! One task. Give Garcia a link between classes. Okay, the car should be out there now with JJ. Since we did all that. Hopefully. Okay, mm. this way. Yep. Oh, it's Hotch. Prentice, these are two rosters. One from the one's from the local community center. The other is from the Austin School of Art. Run for student crossover as soon as you can. I've taken them go to Garcia right now. Okay, Garcia's in there on the computer. Okay, community center roster. Oh yes, give me a list of names and I'll analyze it to pieces. Let's see if the unsub was enrolled in community center or art school. Wait, do you have one from both places? Yep. Okay. Fact one, there's been evidence of physical struggle with each victim, so it's extremely unlikely that the unsub wears glasses. Wait, what? Oh, we're doing guess who? What, um... Extremely unlikely that the unsub wears glasses. Okay, so it's not creepy, dude. What a professor. Is that the thing with, like... You wouldn't punch someone in the face that wears glasses? I've always thought that related to, like... Because I always thought of, like, glasses being really expensive. So you wouldn't have to pay for some someone else's glasses? I'm not sure. I'm lost. <laughs> okay, but let's just go with this. Okay. That looks like the janitor. And that's the landlord. And that person is the friend that was crying. That's fine. This also appears to prefer familiar surroundings and was probably born in the U.S. Okay. Let me see. So not someone from Canada. 
Based on the angle of the stab wounds, this unsub should be shorter than six feet in height. So, anyone six feet or taller? Okay. The person grieving student still there. Fact number four. The physical strength required to subdue the victims indicates that the unsub is heavier than 120 pounds. Let's look at the weight. Okay. Well, not you. Or you. Okay. Number five, given the location of these killings, there is a high probability that the unsub was born in Texas or Louisiana. So it's not going to be someone from Oklahoma. Okay. Based on the last fact, based on when the original murders took place and the unsophisticated nature of the crimes, the unsub should be at least 18 years of age, but younger than 26. Okay, so, now the 17 year olds, but younger than 26. You, oh, two people! Both Jen and the community center director fit our killer's profile, and Rossi last saw them together. Could that be two unsubs? Maybe Mr. Garner knows something to help narrow it down. Okay. Show new information to Mr. Garnet. Okay. Now we are ready to conduct the interrogation. Okay. Look, I've told you all I have to say. Okay, so... If you want to have something to talk about, you're going to have to show me better stuff than that. The letter? I swear these girls are ganging up against me. Have pity. We just need to get the get him to talk to us. Maybe something else would get us closer. The hair? This is morbid love. This is morbid love. Why are you showing this to me? He looks unsettled. Maybe he knows something. We should show him something else. Mm. His profile? What do you need to know? Hi, Frank. We never got the chance for a proper introduction. My name is Emily. How are you doing? Finally, someone with manners! I spent the whole day in this sweltering police station. I've been better, but you're making it a little more pleasant. More Mahjong! Okay. Do you recognize e either of these two people? Of course! That's the ever tempting director at the community center. The other's a student? I can't remember. She's unimportant, though. You can relax with me, Frank. I know you're not guilty. In fact, I was glad to finally get to talk to you. You and me have a whole list of simulating things we could talk about, baby. Trust me, Jin is not in on it. So you remember her, then? I remember her face, is all. And if you're an angel, she's a demon. Look, let's just forget about Jen, okay? She's just some kid. I'm sure there are real suspects out there. We'll find out what happened eventually, Frank. You can either cooperate with me or end up charged as an accomplice. Okay, alright. Jen's one of my students. 
She's in love with me. But you've seen her picture. She's not someone I want to look at all day. She got jealous of everyone. She got jealous of everyone I did look at, though. She... She killed Kate. Oh, my God. We have to find her now. Can you tell us where she is? She brought me that painting. She thought it would impress me. I didn't know what to do besides hide it. I made her promise she'd never do it again. I swear that's all I know. Don't lock me up because of that terrible girl. Summary! Garnet denied knowing Jin. Prentice played the sweet talker. Garnet confessed that Jin is in love with him and that she killed Kate because he paid attention to her instead of Jin. Jin profile. Okay. We have to take the recording of his confession to the others and find Jin fast. task. Find Jin fast. Collect the confession tape. Okay, so that's going to be in here. Cassette. Oh no, we were right. It's Jin. Grab the confession tape before you go and find her. Okay, so where would she be? This is where we originally talked to her. There we go. All suited up. What are you doing standing around? We've got a confession from Garnet that his student Jin is the murderer. Jen is locked in this room, threatening to murder another victim that commits suicide. Hold my position, Princess. We gotta figure out how to talk her out before talk her out of there before there's no one left to talk to. Okay. It's locked. Yunso must be inside. Leave me alone! She has to die! She deserves it! She's unpure! Okay. This is Jin's diary. Okay. Take off strings. Nope. Okay, it's this one. This diary could tell us what we need to know to talk to Jin down. It's covered in angry scratching. She's not cold and calculating. You better believe she's mad. Didn't you say when you met Jin before that she was exceptionally emotional? The writings in this diary support that. She may be sick. Sick with what though? That's how we'll know she how she react to us. Whatever it is, figure it out fast. We've trapped her and she's panicking, which might be especially bad for us. We can use the panic, rile her up, get her to lose control and redirect her attention to us.
She went to a party the night before she killed someone. It's not much to go on, but if I had to take a guess, I would say she has borderline personality disorder. It gives a person intense emotional highs and lows, and they don't do re rejection well. Could we use that to trigger the level of imbalance we need? I know just the thing. Frank's confession is full of rejection. Summary. The diary is passionate and angry. Just from her drastic mood swings, it's possible that she has borderline personality disorder. Use her he heightened emotions to get her to attack us instead of the director by playing parts of Garnett's offensive confession tape. Okay. She's got borderline personality disorder, and we have to use Frank's confession tape to direct her attention to us instead of Director Torres. Okay. Oh, here we go. It needs batteries and confession tape to play. Of course. We have the tape, but we need batteries. So we need batteries to play this thing. Where do we get batteries? Okay, save the director. The recording of Frank's confession should be the tool we need to throw her off. I don't know where to get batteries. Might have to go somewhere else. Ah, oh, hidden object scene. Let me hold on guys, let me just let me just dig through this van and find batteries. There's the kangaroo. Okay. We have batteries. Let's get this thing going. Okay, there's like some C batteries. Okay! Jen, Mr. Garnet isn't worth your life. Let's end this recording of who he really is. Oh, there is a student? I can't remember. She's unimportant, though. Shut it off! He knows who I am! I'm his most dedicated student! her face is all and if you're an angel she's a demon he's a jerk Jen let that innocent woman go you're gonna kill her for a guy like that say he's a jerk again I'll end this don't you ever talk about him we know you have borderline personality disorder you have the greatest not you have the greatest night of your life, and then everything goes to hell. It's a disease. It's not you. I'm not diseased. Those unpure girls were diseased. I'm purging the world of them. It's a better place because of me. My greatest work of art. You're posturing. We know you feel self-conscious, afraid, and even worthless. You don't have to be like that. You can stop now. Jen, please don't do this. Does it really make you happier to kill? You're that witch on the tape! You think you're so sexy! Just wait, I'll get you instead! You can relax with me. You- oh, that's- print this part. You can relax with me, Frank. I was glad to finally get to talk to you. Jen's one of my students. She's in love with me, but you've seen her picture. She's not someone I want to look at all day. She got jealous of everyone I did look at, though. No, you witch! I hate you! I hate him! I'll break through this door! I'll get you! She's away from the victim. Everybody in, now! Summary. Play parts of the tape from Garnet's confession to prove he's not worth her murdering people. Try to tell her we understood her disease. When she recognized Princess as the woman from the tape, she lunged at the door away from the director.
Oh, there was a bit of lag. And... Okay, you've now unlocked case two. Okay, there was... The game lagged a lot. And so I guess the cutscene just didn't show. Okay, so that is the first episode, or at least the first case of Criminal Minds. Uh, thank you guys so much.